Welcome back to another sewing tutorial video. Today I'll be teaching you how to make a gathered border print skirt. And you'll only need to know your waist measurement in order to make this skirt. The techniques that we'll use in this video are pretty simple, so I believe even beginner sewers will be able to make this skirt. We'll be learning how to make gathers, how to sew in a zipper, how to put in buttons and buttonholes, and how to draft the pattern. I hope you'll give this skirt a try, and let's get started. This is a continuation of my previous video where we learned how to make a border print pleated skirt. Gathering the skirt is an easy variation to expand your wardrobe. To make a border print gathered skirt you'll need the following materials. A border print fabric. For the quantity of fabric I suggest buying at least three times the width of your waist. The longer the length of the fabric the fuller the skirt will be. This border print has small flowers which I'm going to use on the waistband at one border and the other border has big flowers which I'm going to use for the main skirt. You'll need interfacing, matching thread, an invisible zipper of at least 25cm in length. If your zipper is long like mine, don't worry, I'll show you how to cut it short. You'll need two buttons of about 2cm diameter, and all the usual sewing supplies such as sewing machine, shears, tailor's chalk, erasable fabric markers, a measuring tape, and iron, an ironing board, and needles. I'm using tracing paper to make the patterns, but you can also use tissue paper or normal paper if you don't have this. To make the pattern, you'll need a ruler, pens, and a set square. This skirt has a fitted waistband and a free skirt, so you'll only need your waist measurement to draft the pattern. Here's how to measure your waist. Take a tape measure and put it around the smallest part of your torso. The tape measure should be straight all the way around your body and snug against your waist. This video is a follow-up to my video on how to use border prints. I highly recommend checking that out to learn what border prints are and how to use them. Let's start drafting up our pieces. We'll be drafting up a rectangle waistband based on your waist measurement. Today I'll be making a straight waistband with two lapped buttons. To start off, draw a line which is the length of your waist plus 2.5cm ease. My waist is 77 centimeters, so I'm going to draw a line to 79.5 centimeters. Make a marking at each end. Each of these ends will represent the center back marking. Next, I'm going to add a 3 centimeter extension for the button on the left side. Measure 3 centimeters and make a marking. Last, I'm adding 1.5 centimeter seam allowance to each end. I want the final width of the waistband to be around the same width as the small flowers. I think the width of about 7.5cm would be best. The height of the pattern needs to be two lots of the width of the waistband you want, plus two lots of seam allowance of 1.5cm. This will be 18cm for me. I'm using my set square to draw a line downwards for 18 centimeters. Do this for the center back markings as well. Make a line at 18 centimeters at the other end of the waistband. Draw a line downwards at the marking you made for the waist measurement plus ease. Name the left end the extension for the buttonhole. I'm going to mark 9cm into the waistband, which is about half, and draw a line over the top of this. This is the fold line. Since our waistband piece will be folded in half widthwise to make the self facing, the fold line will also act as the grain line for this piece. Thank you. 
To draft out a seamless skirt, we only need one measurement. How long you want the skirt to be? If you have a skirt that you like, you can go ahead and measure how long that skirt is. You'll need to check how wide your fabric is and make sure you can comfortably cut both the waistband and the skirt on the width. I want the skirt to be above the knees. This will be a final length of 45 centimeters. To this length, I'm going to add one lot of seam allowance, which is one and a half centimeters, and a hem allowance of two and a half centimeters. Altogether, the length of the skirt pattern piece will need to be 49 centimeters long. Grab some paper, preferably tracing paper if you have it. I like to make a template to help me cut out the skirt evenly. Make a rectangle with the length that you want for the skirt. The width of this rectangle can be as wide as possible. I want the waistband of this skirt to show off the beautiful small roses on one of the borders, so I'm going to arrange the bottom of the waistband piece on top of these flowers. The flowers need to be inside of the seam allowance of the waistband. We need to make sure that the length of the waistband is parallel to the selvage. We'll be using the fold line in the waistband as the grain line. Take your tape measure and measure the distance between the grain line and the selvage. Make sure that this distance is the same down the length of the grain line. Pin the entire waistband piece in place. Cut around the outside of the waistband piece. Next I'm going to cut the skirt on the other selvage with the big roses. In this case I'm going to put the top edge of the skirt against the selvage to make the flowers face how I want them to. Place the template on top of the fabric and pin. Pin it all the way around the outside of the rectangle. For the first cut in the fabric, I'm going to cut along the bottom edge. Then I'm going to cut along the top of the template and cut off the selvage. This is where the skirt is attached to the waistband. I'm going to cut up to the side of the template. This will be part of the center back seam. Do not cut on the right hand side of the template. This is where we add fabric to make the width of the skirt. Take out the pins. Move the template along the selvage of the border print to the next uncut area. Place the top edge of the template against the selvage again. Pin into place. This time we're going to cut at the top and bottom edge of the rectangle. Repeat this process until you've made one long and even rectangle. When you reach the end of your fabric, pin the template so the right edge has a little bit of fabric left. Cut the bottom and top edge of the fabric just the same. Now cut up the right hand side of the template to make a nice clean edge. This will be the other raw edge used for the centre back seam. If you want to pattern match the centre back of this skirt, I recommend checking out my video on pattern matching. It will create a completely seamless look for the skirt. Lastly, I'm going to cut out the waistband and the iron-on interfacing. Place the interfacing on top of the table with the glue side facing up. This will be the shiny side of the interfacing. Place the waistband piece right sides on top. Use your tape measure to make sure that the grain line is parallel with the border. Pin the entire waistband piece. Cut this piece out. Bring the waistband piece over to your ironing board. Place your waistband on the ironing board with the wrong side facing up. Place the glue side of the interfacing face down on the wrong side of the fabric. With your iron on the wool setting, press down on top of the interfacing and hold for a few seconds. The interfacing will glue to the fabric. I'm going to prepare to gather the skirt piece. 
Firstly, I'm going to make a few markings to help me spread the gathers out evenly. At the top edge of the skirt, make a marking at 1.5cm from both of the corners. This represents the seam allowance for the zipper which must lie flat. We will start and end the gathering stitch here. Fold the fabric in half and make a marking at this point. This will also be another point where we start and stop the gathering stitches. I'm breaking the gathering into half to make sure I don't put too much tension on the gathering stitches, because if they snap, you'll need to sew them again. We're going to sew the gathering stitches on the top edge. Change the stitch length to the maximum on the straight stitch, and pull out a thread from the machine before and after you sew. Sew at 1cm and 2cm on the top edge of the border print. Do not back stitch. Pull the fabric out of the machine and cut the threads to leave a long tail. Keep sewing the gathering stitches for the other half of the skirt as well. We'll gather the skirt once we've sewn the zipper in. We'll now sew the zipper into the center back seam of the skirt. My zipper is too long for my skirt, so I'm not going to sew the entire length to it. I'm going to measure from the top of the skirt down to 25 centimeters and make a marking. This is where I will stop sewing the zipper to the fabric. Do this for both ends of the skirt on the right side. At the top edge, make a marking at 1.5cm down on both sides at the corner. The stopper of the zipper must be sewn below this point. Lay out the right hand side of your skirt. Grab your zipper and unzip it. Take the left side of the zipper and place it face down on the fabric. The head of the zipper must be facing down. You need to position the zipper so that the teeth are 1.5cm from the center back raw edge. Pin the zipper into place down to the marking that you made for the end of the zipper. Back at your sewing machine, change your foot to an invisible zipper foot and make sure that you're using the center straight stitch. Bring the zipper up to the zipper foot. Start sewing at the top of the zipper. Place the teeth of the zipper under the left groove of the zipper foot and start sewing. As you sew, press down the teeth so that they move into the groove of the foot. This will help you sew as close as possible to the teeth. Sew all the way down to the marking that you made for the end of the zipper. Fold the skirt in half and bring the other half of the center back seam up to the zipper. Unzip the zipper and bring the right hand side over the top of the raw edge and pin. Pin the side of the zipper in place just the same. Check that the skirt isn't twisted, it should create a loop. Take the skirt over to the sewing machine. Bring the top of the zipper under the right hand groove of the zipper foot. Sew from the top of the zipper down to the marking that you made for the end of the zipper. The zipper is all sewn. Check how well it zips up. Bring the rest of the center back seam right sides together. Sew the seam together at one and a half centimeters. Leave a little space from the end of the zipper and the seam. My zipper is too long for the skirt, so I'm going to shorten it. Change your stitch setting to a very wide zigzag stitch with a short stitch length. Bring the zipper into the machine so that the teeth are directly underneath the foot. The rest of the skirt should be clear from the sewing. Turn the hand wheel to gauge the width of the zigzag. The needle should be sewing from side to side of the zipper teeth, but not on the zipper teeth. Sew backwards and forwards for a bit. You can now cut the rest of the zipper off below this stopper. At this point, you can go ahead and finish the seam. I'm using an overlocker, but you can also sew on top of the raw edge with a zigzag stitch. While you're at it, finish the raw edge of the bottom as well. We can now sew the skirt to the waistband. Grab your waistband piece. 
On the right side of the fabric, we need to mark the center back. Pin the pattern to the fabric next to the center back markings. Fold the pattern on top of this marking. Use your tailor's chalk to make a marking on the fabric next to the fold. Repeat for the other center back marking. Do this for the bottom of the waistband only. Now fold the waistband to bring the markings together. This halfway point will be the center front. Use some tailor's chalk to make a marking here. Grab your skirt piece. We now gather the skirt. Take a thread from each of the gathering stitches. Pull these threads gently as you push the fabric along. Gather all the way over the top edge of the skirt. At the end of the skirt, you must fold the zipper towards the wrong side and pin. Bring the skirt over to the waistband with the right sides together. Pin the center front of the skirt to the center front of the waistband. Place the end of the skirt with the zipper folded away on top of the center back marking of the waistband and pin. Adjust the gathers so that these fit snugly together. Once you're done, knot together all the strings so that the length stays the same. Push the gathers around with your fingers until they are even. Repeat for the other half of the skirt. Pin the entire skirt. Bring the skirt over to the sewing machine. We'll be sewing with the skirt side on top. Sew from the zipper to zipper at one and a half centimeter seam allowance. I suggest sewing again at about 1.3 cm seam allowance to reinforce the seam. Use your quick unpick to pull out all the gathering stitches. We need to carefully trim off the excess seam allowance but keep the shape of the waistband. So I'm going to snip into the waistband for about half of the seam allowance next to the skirt. I'm then going to fold away the rest of the waistband and trim off half the seam allowance for the waist seam. Finish the raw edge of this seam. At the end of the waistband, fold the waistband in half widthwise. Bring the corners together and pin. For the short end of the waistband, we'll be sewing from the end of the previous seam to the fold. The seam allowance needs to be one and a half centimeters. For the side with the extension, I'm starting sewing at the fold at one and a half centimeters. When you reach the corner, push the needle into the fabric. Lift the foot and turn the fabric 90 degrees. Continue sewing until you reach the previous seam. Sew the reinforcing seam at 1.3 centimeters.
With your scissors, carefully trim off all the seam allowance at the end of the waistband. Cut up to the reinforcing seam but not through it. I'm going to finish the raw edges at the end of the waistband using a zigzag stitch. Bring your skirt up to the ironing board, push the end of the waistband the right way out and iron the corners neat. On the right side of the skirt, use your tape measure to make the waistband even and press the fold. Turn the skirt over. The last raw edge needs to be folded away towards the inside of the skirt so that it can't be seen. Adjust the fold so that it's just above the waist seam and press. Pin into place. I'm going to hand sew the last seam of the waistband using a ladder stitch. Here's how to do it. Thread your needle with a double strand and knot. Push the needle through the wrong side of the seam allowance where you want to start and hide the knot. Pull through. We'll make the first stitch into the facing of the waistband. Push the needle into the fabric at about the same area as the thread leaves the seam allowance. Make a stitch length of about half a centimeter. Pull the needle through. The next stitch is made into the seam allowance of the waist seam. Repeat the same stitch. This time you need to check that the needle isn't piercing the right side of the waistband before pulling through. Continue the latter stitch across the waistband. When you reach the end, here's how to knot off. Create a small stitch where you want the knot to be and leave a loop. The needle needs to pass through the loop three times. Pull the string and a knot will be created at the base. Repeat once and knot off the thread. The waistband is ready for the buttons. On the waistband, I'm going to sew two button holes onto the extension. The buttons will be sewn into the shorter side of the waistband. To mark the button and button holes, I'll be using an erasable fabric marker for more accurate results. On the right side of the extension, I'm going to make a line 1.5cm from the edge. I'm making another line at 2cm from the top edge of the waistband. This line represents the length of the buttonhole. The point where the two lines cross is where the buttonhole will start. I'm then going to make a short line 2cm above the bottom edge. This will be at the other buttonhole. Draw a line 1.5cm from the end of the waistband. Draw another small line 2cm from the top and bottom edge. The button will be sewn at the crossing of these lines. Check your instruction book for how to make a button hole for your machine. Load your button into the foot. My button is spherical so it needs a little extra space, so I'm going to pull the pin slightly wider than the button. Load the button hole foot into your machine. Pull down the tab at the side to guide the foot. Change the stitch settings to a rectangle buttonhole. You may need to lower the stitch length as well, but this will be in your manual. Remember that after each buttonhole, you need to switch the buttonhole mode off then on again to restart the sequence. Place the waistband into the machine so that the needle is facing the end. The marking for the end of the buttonhole must be inside the space of the needle, with the lines aligned directly in the middle. Start sewing those buttonholes. Place 
place the pin at the end of the buttonhole. Push your unpicker into the other side of the buttonhole in the space between the threads. Rip an opening up to the pin. Take the pin out. You should be able to pass the button through the hole. Now we sew in the button. Thread your needle with a double strand and knot. Push the needle into the facing side of the waistband and through the buttonhole marking. Pass the needle through the loop at the back side of the button. Push the needle through the fabric so that you can make a loop. Keep repeating the section so that you build up some thread on the button. Since this button comes with its own shank, you can sew the button snugly against the fabric. Push the needle through the wrong side of the fabric and create a knot at the facing side of the waistband. Knot off. Just a few bits of hand sewing left and we can finish this skirt. I'm going to hand sew the invisible hem. Take your skirt over to the ironing board. On the wrong side of the skirt, use your measuring tape to fold up the hem by 2.5cm for the hem. Use an iron to press the fold. Do this for the entire hem of the skirt. Now take the raw edge and fold it inside of the hem. Press this fold. Pin the hem into place. Do this for the entire hem of the skirt. Thread your needle and hide the knot in the seam allowance for the centre back seam. I'm making a small stitch at the centre back seam. Next, run the needle through the fold of the hem for about half a centimetre and pull through. The next stitch is made on the wrong side of the skirt. Pick up a few threads of the fabric with your needle close to the last stitch and pull through. Make the next stitch into the hem of the fabric for about half a centimetre. Repeat these stitches for the entire hem of the skirt. Try to keep your stitching loose for the best look. On the outside of the dress, the hem is almost invisible and looks really neat. Lastly, we need to hand sew the little space that's in between the end of the zipper and the centre back seam. I'm using a lattice stitch, just like with the waistband. Thread your needle with a double strand and knot. I'm going to start sewing at the bottom of the skirt. Make the latter stitch up to the end of the zipper. At this point, I like to make a few horizontal stitches to help stop the zipper. Push the needle down to the wrong side of the fabric. Knot the seam off just like previously. The skirt is all ready to wear. This style of skirt is very feminine and youthful. You can change the length of the skirt to make different styles or use different prints of fabric. You'll find yourself making lots of copies of this skirt once you get the hang of it. Today we learned how to make a fabulous gathered border print skirt. It was really easy to make and looks super cute. If you like me, you'll be making this skirt a lot to fill out your handmade wardrobe. I hope you learned a little something from this tutorial. Please like and subscribe if so. Thanks for watching!